the value is tenfold, a hundredfold. You know, I mean, this is for something sure. I'm going to keep for the rest of my life and I'm going to know this. And it's everything Hillary was saying about bringing more to the table and bringing your value and feeling good about it. So, hi, everybody. I'm Hillary. I am, I currently right now work for Calyx as a Salesforce support specialist. Um, I've been in the ecosystem for probably just over a year now um, and at my job for just under a year. Um, in terms of coding experience, I think rudimentary would be um, probably the best word for my, to describe my coding knowledge. I know what, that Apex is a language and that that's the Salesforce language. Um, but besides that, that's really as far as my knowledge goes. Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer. I currently work for Arcus, and I'm a Salesforce implementation consultant. I work with a lot of different clouds, but I specialize in experience cloud. I have been in the ecosystem just over a year. I come from a marketing background where I've helped build websites. So I do know HTML and um, uh, CSS. Other than that, I don't have any Apex or developer experience with Salesforce in the ecosystem at all. Well, I decided to join because I'm very technically minded and I really do like code and I really, really like HTML. And when I work with Experience Cloud, even though it's a lot of the drag and drop interface, that sometimes there's custom code involved and I'd like to go back into the dev console. If we've asked our dev team to create something, I can uh, go back, I look in the dev console, and I can usually find out what the client wants and tell the dev team, hey, I want you to add this in the code, and this is the place to do it, which has been really helpful instead of just handing it over to them. And so I want to learn more so I can do more of that, but I also want to be able to make my own Lightning Web components which would help with Experience Cloud when we do need um, custom dev work. So that that was my big interest right there. I sort of always kind of had this plan when I started, you know, getting into Salesforce. And my plan was to do my admin and then get a platform app builder and go into development because I feel like then it makes you really well-rounded holistically, like this kind of knowledge. Like I want to be able to sit at the table with the devs and not be lost and to be able to follow the conversation to be able to bring up issues and you know know a root cause or know and be that bridge between the admin and a developer. And so that was really my motivation at first. Um, I work right now in an enterprise size org and we have enterprise size problems sometimes. And so it's really, it's been really fun, really interesting to start to see some of those apex errors. And instead of freaking out and like, oh my gosh, I have to get like a dev on this right away like being able to go and actually look at the code or look at the error and see if this is something that's really as scary as this like, you know, 10 line error message that pops up. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. So that's really been been my motivation. Yeah, I actually kind of echo what Hillary was saying about those error codes, because sometimes you look at them and you're like, I don't even know. But when you start learning the code, you understand them and they're not scary. And then it's a lot easier to trace. You can look at them and say, oh, I can fix this. Or you know who can you can go to to fix it. It might be the dev team or it might be somebody on your team that knows more about something in an area. But it's really, really helpful in the day to day to know those error codes. Yeah, it doesn't stop you in your tracks. You know, you don't freeze. No. Exactly. And I think maybe it was, you know, a little bit as the imposter syndrome started to wear out that, you know, you gain a little bit more confidence and like, you know, especially if you have a good supportive team that you're kind of willing to be able to like dip your toes in or, you know, stray a little bit from your comfort zone. And mm -hmm. I really like that, like, the idea of, you know, having that apex knowledge, like just expands your comfort level. I've also found that now that I know a little bit more, and I know there's more to come, that not only can I identify it, people recognize that. And I've had a couple people talk to me and say, do you know what this is? And I'm like, oh yeah, psh, you can you can take care of that. So you almost become one of those, um, not necessarily a subject matter expert, but a go-to person when people yeah. are having issues. 
Totally. Being that bridge is such a great opportunity and like such a great position to be in that you can sit down and and maybe take in input from your admin, you know, from the admin team or from the client and then be able to like translate that into Apex or dev speak, you know, so that you can really like boil it down to like what the requirement is instead of it like dragging out or having to go through like this intensive process to really find out what's going on. You can kind of act as that mediator. A very simple example that I can give you is I was working with flex cards, which are part of Omni Studio. And had I not taken this class, when I was trying to configure, there is no way I would have known what I was doing because it had, you know, it was talking about maps and keys and I wouldn't know what to fill in those. I know that it's, you know, supposed to be clicks, not code, but you've got to know something to do that. So I was able to get through that. And another part of that were the SQL queries, which I can write a basic one, but I did not know anything about limits, offsets, or how to pull a child record in. And because I did that, I actually didn't get stuck on the project. Um, someone said, well, I don't know how to do this. And I said, I'll do it. And I did it. I mean, it took like 10 seconds. It was so easy and I could not believe that six weeks ago, I, there's no way I could have done that. I wouldn't have recognized the little things that I do now that make, like Hillary was saying, imposter syndrome, it makes it a lot better. I think everybody, from what I understand, has it, no matter where you are in the ecosystem. But when you know everything around, it makes it so much easier to get through imposter syndrome so I know for me in the last six weeks, I've been able to bring things to the table at my work that never would have six weeks ago, that I would have spent more time, frustration and research trying to figure out or just asking someone else to do it for me. But in this case, I was able to be able to complete it myself. And that gave me a lot more confidence. In my work scenario, it's structured a little bit differently. People have much more defined roles. And quite often for the admin team, you know, as soon as an Apex error or comes up, we immediately send it off to Jira, send it off to the dev team. And much like Jen, there's been a couple of opportunities that I've been able to stop and actually look at the error. And because now I'm more familiar with some of the concepts, with what these errors are, why they come up, that I've been able to read through the error and identify it's not really a developer issue. They're just mm -hmm. missing a field that needs to be entered. So yeah, having that confidence to be able to stop and look and maybe investigate where maybe I would not have been confident enough to go and do it before, has definitely been something new and refreshing. Yeah, and I like what you said that it really isn't a dev problem because I, I'm sure that the dev team, where I work, we have a dev team, probably laugh at some of the things that get sent to them. They're like, oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's be the hero and fix it. But I guess we could be the hero now. Not everything has to be a dev issue, especially if they're gonna go and spend their time and investigate something that really was just that, for whatever reason, user error, whatever happened, a field got left blank. Like, do you really need to pay a developer to go and investigate that? Yeah, and I think that's where we can really add value you know, what if we just took this course and stopped? How much value is that already? I mean, we, we paid for the course or some of us, I know I had my company pay for it and it was the value, you know? Um, I just, we, I know we have funds. I asked about it. Now I'm not a developer. So they, they did want to know, you know, why, why do you want to do this? You know? Um, and for me, I, I told them the experience cloud thing, this is going to help me be a better admin or a better builder for clients because I know this and I'm not going to waste their time or the the dev team's time. So I, I do think that um, it adds so much value. So much. Absolutely. Just being able to take those kind of low hanging fruit mm -hmm. and, That's exactly and, and just take those over and relieve your dev team for, for actual like, you know, <laughs> intensive like developer issues. And you know, and as you gain more experience and more confidence, even with those low hanging fruits and you continue learning, 
you know, it's very easy to imagine scaling up and, mm -hmm. you know, if we're at this point six weeks in and feel like we're already adding value just with what we've learned, like I can only imagine like by the time we get to the end. Yeah. And that's, that's value to your employer, to yourself, to your career development, to your education. I mean, it, it's, it's value to your family. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's all around really, really good. I can imagine the people that, because there are people that are picking it up a lot faster than me, I can imagine the value they're getting. With the live sessions, the fact that you can ask someone live is like, I've taken some great courses, but they weren't live and you don't get the feedback. You don't yeah. get to ask your on-demand questions. And that's that's really important to me. You know what I really like about the course is you don't have to do it at any certain pace. You know, I'm trying to do it at the pace that Warren has provided because I'm just a very goal oriented person and that's what works for me. It pushes me. But if you if you don't have to, you don't have to. If you have something going on in your life, take a small break. It's totally fine. And everybody has each other. We all kind of communicate to each other and and I do know that some people are further behind and some people are ahead, but everybody helps each other. Yeah, the community aspect is really great. And that makes it so much, like it's so enriching to the, not just the curriculum, but that you kind of gain these connections and people that I think as Warren said, like these are the people that you're gonna reach out to or that you're gonna stay in touch with that may end up connecting you with a career or that you may end up connecting with their next step in their career progress. So that's, it just makes it whole as opposed to just buying a course online and sitting by yourself and doing it. I know for myself, like in my learning style, I need a little bit of a fire under me. Like if I just have these like open-ended courses, there's always something that's gonna fill that time. Like I work full time, I have two little kids, like something will always come up to fill that time. But when I have a, a little bit of that structure, like not so much where like, you know, I have to cry myself to sleep, not sleep, you know, to, to you know, cause I'm so under pressure, but just enough to kind of like, you really need to be at this point and like just that little push, like that's really what I need. But I appreciate that it's not so fast paced or so much pressure that I feel like burnt out or overwhelmed. And, and we don't get in trouble for turning our homework in late because I do it every week. Me too. <laughs> like, I want to. I just haven't figured it out. And sometimes I turn it in wrong and I know it. But then I get some feedback on where I could have or what little tweaks or things to think about. Not the answers. Warren never gives us the answers. No. Which can be frustrating if you want the answers. I but... love I love hate that. <laughs> that there's no um, easy answers. <laughs> yeah. It kind of gives you questions to put you on the path to ask more questions until you figure it out. And so yeah. that's good. So yeah, you can turn your homework in late. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. No, you're not graded. He's, you know, Warren yeah. still appreciates everybody. <laughs> we have these live sessions. And I think at ev the beginning of every live session, if, if I remember right, Warren is always like, you guys are doing great. I know you're frustrated, but look how far you've come. And, you know, he's just really encouraging and he kind of brings us back and reminds us from where we were just from one week ago, you know, and I always think that's really nice. For me, it opens up more opportunities at my current job, for sure. And I can go beyond this course and develop myself more. And if I wanted to become a developer, I could, I know the possibilities are there. So I think it's a, a big confidence booster. I don't know where I wanna go with it other than I do wanna build lightning web components in Experience Cloud. And I definitely know that helps at my work and it's gonna save them money because then they don't need a dev team. But um, for career opportunities, I, I feel like when you can talk the talk, it's really gonna open up doors for you. For sure. Who doesn't want an admin that can code? You know, having somebody else on your team that can provide backup to your dev team that maybe can do things like Q&A that understand the code, that understand, you know, the outcomes, that understand the end user and then the back end. 
that's huge value to your current company, to your future company. It helps future proof you that you just, you've got that, that little bit of an edge over somebody else maybe that is also in the ecosystem. Um, Cause you can also bring table or you can bring some development experience. And even if it is just at a junior level, that means that, you know, a company that might bring you on gets an admin and a junior dev. And that's huge. It really just helps to beef up your resume, to beef up your experience mm -hmm. and to really make you marketable or, and bring huge value. The value is tenfold, a hundredfold. You know, I mean, this is for something sure. I'm going to keep for the rest of my life and I'm going to know this. And it's everything Hillary was saying about bringing more to the table and bringing your value and feeling good about it. Yeah, that is so understated. You're totally right, Jen, that just, I know for me, it's it's something I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go this path, but it's what I wanted to do. And that is hugely, I mean, we talk a lot about, you know, it bringing confidence and that's hugely empowering to, to know, like whatever the outcome is, I chose to do this and mm -hmm. this is the path I wanted to go down. And I did it, you know. From the Academy, I would like to thank my husband who brings me dinner diligently while I'm sitting at the computer and constantly coding. And my teenager who stays in his room, which all teenagers probably do, but doesn't come and ask me for money while I'm trying to code. Thank you. Shout out to the community and the great support from everybody in the first cohort. Shout out to my husband for putting up with me being glued to my computer pretty much day and night. Um, it's a challenge when you have little kids. So he's really, um, really picked it up and really been able to kind of carry the load with them, which is so important and kind of goes back to that, like, be real, ask for help, make sure that you set your boundaries and set your expectations because it's a bit of a ride, but it's so, it's so worth it. Even though it's tough and we're saying this in the time commitment, it's four months. And I tell myself that when, yeah. when I'm like, oh my gosh, it's this time and I'm still doing this. I'm doing it all weekend. I'm like four months. Look at, look at what I'm going to be, look how far I've come and look what I'm going to get out of this.